Shalom Israel, first and foremost, I want to say all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of the house of David. Salutations to you brothers throughout the four corners of the earth, teaching the truth and righteousness and sincerity to you Israelite foreigners, come back home to the truth. To those that passed away serving the Lord, the dead in Yahweh Shai shall arise first. All right, I want to do this video to uh, bring out this book, Mysteries of the Mexican Pyramids. By Peter Tompkins. Um, this is one of those books. Honestly, it's 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 uh, you know you you know you know when a book is a waste of money. I'll tell you this. This isn't a major book that has a lot of you know major evidence proving that the so-called Mexicans are Israelites. Um, I think that Negro only doctrine is is getting you know is, is, is starting to really catch fire basically. Um. I'm seeing a lot of people carried over by that bullshit. And as as it gets stronger, we have to we have to combat it with facts, you know. And then and then you got stupid people that uh that say shit like like the the uh the so-called Mexicans, the original ones were negroes and remain negroes. You know, so I'm going to start with the preface. All right, it says Wait, wait hold on, hold on. All right. It says deep in the jungles of Mexico and Central America, in the tight embrace of the root and vine clawed by jaguar or caressed by rattler, lie the remains of perhaps thousands of ancient pyramids, pyramids on pyramids, many still uncovered, abandoned by unknown builders at an unknown time for unknown reasons. In their secret places may lie more of the precious codices and hieroglyphic writings, celestial mathematics sculptured into geometric form, which makes it possible to reconstruct the brilliance of a civilization which the Church of Rome did all in its power to obliterate. So I read all that just to really read the last part of it where it says the Church of Rome, the Catholic Church, did all in its power to obliterate because they didn't want the, the truth to get out. That these people that they conquered was the Israelites. So it says the Maya, it is now clear, constructed the calendars of syn synodic return to the planets laced with the cyclic or cyclic phenomena of solstices, equinoxes, and eclipses of the sun and moon. Because if you remember, when you read the scriptures, you know, the tribe of Issachar, they, they were gifted in, in uh, knowing how to read the stars, you know. So I'm going to skip up. Let me see here. All right. It says when Cortez returned with enough Spaniards and native allies to defeat the Mexica. So the native allies. So they used us against each other. It says he ordered the great and beautiful city of Tenochtitlan destroyed palaces, columns, and gods were buried in the mud on the level ruins. Co Cortez founded his own great capital, Mexico City, patterned on a feudal model already dying in Europe. Mexican slaves by the thousands, many of them highly sculpt, skilled as sculptors, carpenters and masons and gardeners, hauled stone and timber from the debris of Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan. You know, so it goes to show you, you know, they, they, they conquered us and then made us their slaves. You know, page 16. It says, uh, what am I really looking for here? Hold up. Oh. It says, uh, they said of the Indians that God truly did them a great service by entrusting them to the Spaniards who converted them and treated them so well after they enslaved us and stole Oh yeah, yeah, that 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 I wanted to get from this previous page here. After plundering Tenochtitlan, Cortez branded the faces of its inhabitants with hot irons. Yeah, that's such a great way to treat them, huh? And attempted to force di divulgation to, of the location of the fabled Aztec treasure. Though fifteen million dollars worth of gold was found, this represented only part of what was known to exist. 
So he robbed us of 15 million. You know what 15 million dollars would do to Mexico or do for Mexico right now? And this was 15 million dollars when this book was written. So imagine, you know, with inflation and shit, you know, how much that 15 million dollars would have been worth today. This book was written in 1976. About 43 years ago. So, reading on, it says, as, as land was stolen from the natives, great families ensued. So, uh, great famines ensued. Th didn't the scripture say that our land would be violently taken away from us? But we don't fit the curses. Yet heavy taxes were laid on Indians. Those who failed to pay were tortured to death. Indians who refused to join the Catholic Church were horsewhipped, had their heads shaved, and were forbidden to hold office or title in their villages. For failing to attend Mass or for practicing any of his old rites, an Indian could receive a hundred lashes. According to the Spaniards, Indians were supposed to know only the Our Father Ave Maria Credo and Ten Commandments, reading and writing were considered as dangerous as the devil. Oh, but we don't fit the curses. That's what some stupid skink from uh, Texas told me on uh, on Facebook. Named Brit. Some stupid skink. Negro only Israelite. Because she's stupid. Just like most of them Negro only Israelites are. But it says, uh, page 29. Carreri found the town of Acapulco, which he had expected to be Mexico's gateway to the east, no more than a fishing village with straw roofed shacks inhabited almost exclusively by Negroes, mulattoes, and very few Indians. So you actually had towns. That already had Negroes, so-called Negro, you know, because the, the so-called Negroes and the Latinos are the same people, you know. We're just called Latinos today, you know. Uh, page 39. I want to go to page 39. How, asked the Italian, had the Indians been able to transport heavy stones from distant quarries when they had neither mules nor horses before the arrival of the Spaniards, a question which no one in Mexico could satisfactorily answer for him. So, you know, it's pretty clear, you know, building these pyramids, it was, it was difficult, just like it was in Egypt. All right, reading on, page 40. Echoing the thoughts of Siguenza, Carreri attributed the construction to the Olmecs Possible, possibly refugees from Atlantis or to Europeans who had crossed the Atlantic, pointing out that even Aristotle had known that the Carthaginians had sailed beyond the Strait of Gibraltar to a new world, but had been forbidden further such voyages by a Senate fearful that the richness of this newly discovered lands would make the sailors forget their home. So, you know, a little bit more evidence proving that the Israelites came over from the Middle East. You know, reading on, uh, page 118. Remember when I told you this book was a waste of money if you buy it? You know, I, went, I just skipped from page 40 to 118 to find the next relevant thing in the book. So it says, uh, long commentaries in Greek, Hebrew, Latin, and Sanskrit, even the East Indians spoke about it, mostly in support of the theory that the lost tribes of Israel were the progenitors of the Maya, brought the opus to nine weighty and oversized folio volumes. So nine heavy-ass books. One of literature's great tours Toward the force which no government had dared of, and few individuals could have afforded or executed, but which executed its 
author because he too could not afford it. Right? There's a little, little further evidence. Page 119. Kingsborough took up the notion that Las Casas, from Las Casas, that the lost tribes of Israel had peopled Yucatan. If you remember, you know, Las Casas is quoted in many of these ten tribes books. You know, so it's 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 uh very imperative that when you read these history books that you uh hold up that you read these history books that you remember any any you know, like in this case, it was a common name. Right? Page three forty eight. Notice I just went from page 119 to 348. Remember I told you this book is a waste of money. So it says, from Bishop Landa's reports, it is clear that the strangers did not come, as Morley suggests, from the southeast overland, but from across the seas. Some of the old people of Yucatan say they heard from their ancestors that this land was occupied by a race of people from the east and whom God had delivered by opening 12 paths through the sea. Archaeologists then discovered the remains of another whole civilization on the east coast of Mexico, just north of the Maya, complete with hieroglyphics calendar system and pyramidal religious complexes, which appeared to antedate, which means it was before, morally civilized Maya by almost a thousand years. For lack of a better name, the archaeologists called these people Olmex or the rubber people, though no one knows what these people might have called themselves. Possibly it's a car. After considerable research, she traced the upturned shoes to either the Hittites or their successors and imitators, the Phoenicians. Renowned as great seafarers who regularly wore long clinging double robes, turbans with ribbons, Israelite custom. Pointed beards, Israelite custom, and upturned shoes. Then it says down here, support for a Phoenician landfall on the east coast of Mexico appeared in the form of enormous stone heads with marked Negroid features and what looked like baby caps or football helmets dug up from the subsoil of La Venta dated to about 500 BC. The Israelites came here in 722 BC. This is an Olmec head. Olmec head. Pointing to other Phoenician carvings of black slaves wearing such helmets, Constance Irwin suggested that nothing could have been more natural for Phoenician traders than to have picked up African Negroes on the west coast of Africa and sailed with them across the Atlantic to Mexico. Further evidence of the presence of men with Negroid features accompanying bearded Semites also turned up farther west in Oaxaca. All right. So this is proof that so called black, you know, some of these people were so called black that were here. All right. Like the Olmecs, the earliest known settlers of Monte Alban had a hieroglyphic system of writing a calendar and a mathematical system of computing by bar and dot. Among the institutions and customs shared by the Phoenicians of the first millennium BC and the inhabitants of Central America during the same era, Constance Irwin has listed several items starting with an advanced knowledge of math mathematics and astronomy which the phoenicians picked up from the babylonians in common with the maya the babylonians were the only known ancient civilization that had a price value in their mathematics the concept of zero and the ability to express large numbers as indicated by the cuneiform text found in mesopotamia with the now no longer so mysterious number, I'm not going to read that shit. You're, you you can see it for yourself. I'm not going to say that number. Uh, okay, page 352. Nor does the tale of travel to the west stop there. 
after the Phoenicians and Carthaginians, Greeks, Romans, Irish, Welsh, and all manner of Scandinavian left tales and evidence of travel to the Americas. Books with information on these voyages fill several shelves in the stacks of the Library of Congress, some with specific studies like those of Professor Cyrus Golden, others popular summaries such as Charles Michael Boland's They All Discovered America. So much for uh, Cristobal Colon. All right, page 358, we're almost done. Niven also found the tomb, found in the tomb 125 small terracotta idols, mannequins, images, and dishes, some with features strongly Phoenician or Semitic. So the Phoenician or Semitic had to be similar. One sitting cross-legged Indian style with a hollow movable head set on its neck and a, by a cleverly devised truncated tenon fitted into a mortise at the base of the skull. All right. So more, more evidence. This was found in Mexico, by the way. So last thing, last excerpt I'm going to read or last excerpts, page 381 to 382. As for the lost tribes of Israel, Casey confirms that a portion of them came into the southernmost portion of the United States, mixing with the refugees from Mu, then moved on to Mexico and Yucatan, but mostly the central part near what is now Mexico City. And it says, he says they too came by boat, setting sail during those periods when they were when when there was the breaking up of the tribes of Israel and while the rest were enslaved in the Persian land. All right. So this is, you know, more evidence proving that the so-called his the ancestors of the Hispanics are the, you know, part of the heritage of Israel. You know, with that, you know, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna say Shalom.